A Raspberry Pi is a computer. You can plug a keyboard, monitor, mouse into it, and you can use it just like you use a computer. You can also plug it into your Ethernet. Uh, you can plug it into your router using the Ethernet port here, and you can get online with it, and you can actually surf the web with it just like you do with the computer. But this was meant for education. This was built uh, by the uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation, which is a nonprofit foundation in the UK, which wanted to create a computer board that kids can use and uh, learn and hack and build on. So I want to kind of go over some of the parts of the Raspberry Pi before we dive into what you need to get started with it. First of all, the chip that runs everything, the main CPU chip on the Raspberry Pi, is the same kind of chip you'll find in a cell phone from a few years ago. If you're into the specs, it's an ARM 11, it's 700 megahertz, and it has 512 megabytes of RAM uh, and, uh, on the, the higher end version of the Raspberry Pi. As I said, you can connect it to a monitor. And the Raspberry Pi has two options for connecting it to a monitor. One on the bottom that you see there is an HDMI port. This is for connecting it to a newer digital monitor or a newer television, which has an HDMI port on it. There's also a composite port on it uh, for sending NTSC or PAL video signals. So if you have an old television set, the Raspberry Pi can give it new function. Or you can use your old television set to use the Raspberry Pi. Uh, there's also a USB port. This is how you would plug in a, a keyboard or a mouse. You could also plug in something like a webcam. Almost any USB device you could probably get going on the Raspberry Pi. And there's that Ethernet port I was talking about here. This is how you'll connect it to the network. Um, if you don't have a wired network to connect it to, you can use that USB port and put in a USB Wi-Fi dongle. They're about $10. And you can get the Raspberry Pi onto the Wi-Fi for just 10 bucks extra. There's a little power jack on here. It looks like a, it, it's a little micro USB power jack, the kind you find on a lot of cell phones. It's only used for power, though. So you just need a USB uh, A to um, uh, micro B cable to power the board through that little tiny jack there. There's an audio jack also if you want to connect speakers to the Raspberry Pi, just like a computer. And there's also this port. Now, this port is called a camera serial interface. It's the kind of connection that you're going to find inside a cell phone. And it's how a cell phone's main board will connect to the camera that's in your cell phone. And they've broken this out, and they've put this connector on the board that you can access. And they make a camera board, I think it's about $30, that you can connect to the Raspberry Pi if you want to connect a camera directly to it. But as I said before, there's also the USB port. So if you have an old USB webcam hanging around, you can connect it that way as well. I think one of the best parts of the Raspberry Pi is this part right here. These are the pins on the top. These are the GPIO pins. They're called General Purpose Input and Output Pins. How many people here are familiar with the Arduino or have used the Arduino, have an Arduino? You may be familiar with the pins that are on the Arduino, which you can control with software. You can turn them on or off to control things like LEDs or lights. Or you can read whether a switch is turned on or off or read different kinds of sensors. This is what this board has. And this makes it a little bit different than a normal computer, because you typically don't have something like this broken out from your normal computer. But this makes it great for hacking and playing and experimenting with computers. So those are the, the, the GPIO pins. And it's one of the reasons why we at Make absolutely love uh, the Raspberry Pi, because we can create projects that use electronics and hardware, but we also have a fully fledged computer to work with. Now, I'm going to show you the best feature of the Raspberry Pi now. And I don't work for Raspberry Pi at all. It's only $35. That's the best part about Raspberry Pi. It means that if you're not sure about it, if you're not sure you're going to be able to do anything with it, if you're not sure it's worthwhile, it doesn't make a big difference because it's only $35. If you're afraid of breaking it, if you want to try something that's experimental and you, you might fry the board, it was only $35. If you want to give it to your kid and have your kid experiment with it, they're not going to throw the main family computer offline by changing some configuration file. This was only $35, and it's a computer that is meant to be played around with and explored with. And if $35 is too much, there's also the Model A, which doesn't have the Ethernet port and only has one USB port on it. It's a little less expensive, and it has half the amount of RAM, the, the memory, than the Model B version of Raspberry Pi. So if um, you want to use a project, if you want to use it in a project, you may experiment with a full-fledged Model B. And then you may move over to the Model A, which is the cheaper one. It also uses less power. 
So I, I think this quote from Linus Torvalds, he was talking to someone from BBC News about what's so great about the Raspberry Pi. And he said he finds things like Raspberry Pi to be an important thing, trying to make it possible for a wider group of people to tinker with, electron with computers and just playing around, and making computers cheap enough that you can not only afford the hardware at a big scale, but perhaps more important, afford failure. I think that's the critical thing here. Raspberry Pi lets you afford failure. You can experiment with impunity, and you don't have to worry about it too much. If you don't know Linus Torvalds, he's the father of Linux, the founder of the free operating system Linux, which is what Raspberry Pi runs on. Just like you might use Mac OS or Windows on your computer, Raspberry Pi runs Linux. So let, let me jump ahead a little bit, and I'll talk about what, uh, what you'll need if you want to get started with Raspberry Pi. First of all, you need a power supply. USB power supplies, like the ones that come with your cell phone, many times they work very well. You just want to make sure that they're going to give enough current to the Raspberry Pi. They must be 5 volts, and they must provide about an amp or more. Okay? If, you have, if it comes through, it'll say current output you know, um, 1A or 1,000 milliamps, MA, you know you've got enough. It can go as low as 700 milliamps or 0.7 amps is probably enough. But uh, you just want to keep an eye at Not all 5-volt adapters will provide enough power to it. To connect the uh, power supply, you'll use a USB cord like this, a micro USB cord. Instead of a hard drive, the Raspberry Pi uses an SD card. This is exactly the kind of SD card that you put into your camera. It's exactly the kind of SD card that you can get from a drugstore these days. And if you're looking to pick up an SD card for the Raspberry Pi, I would recommend a 4 gigabyte class 4 card. Um, lots of Raspberry Pi kits come with uh, the SD card already. In fact, the kit we sell in the Maker Shed uh, includes an SD card as well. As I mentioned, you want to connect a keyboard and mouse to your Raspberry Pi. Uh, USB would work best. And then a monitor uh, as well. Now, if you don't want to use a keyboard mouse monitor, you don't have to, actually. Uh, you can connect it to your network and connect to it remotely and use the network connection to communicate with your Raspberry Pi to start programs or to even use the desktop environment if you want. Another accessory that's not required but uh, is recommended is a case like this one. Uh, this one's made by Adafruit. It's about 10 bucks. Um, it, it's a fantastic case. Uh, the company over there, Pimeroni, they make fantastic and beautiful cases that you can buy as well. A case isn't required, but I think it's nice to have. If you don't want to buy a case, you can also make a case out of Lego. I think that's a great way to do it. Uh, you can program the Raspberry Pi in almost any language you want. And what I'm showing here is Scratch, which is a visual programming language where you can drag and drop different components around to make animations and make games and so on. That's preloaded on the Raspberry Pi that you, so that you can build and create your own f projects and functions just by drag and drop. If you know other programming languages like Python, C, Java, all those, you can, you can make your program on the Raspberry Pi with this. I want to show off a couple projects real fast here. Uh, for one, I have the, uh, I wanted to attach the Raspberry Pi to my bike. I bike around Brooklyn, around New York City, and I wanted to be able to see information about my ride in the beam of the headlight. So I strapped a Raspberry Pi to my bike, I strapped a battery, I put some circuitry on it, and I connected the front wheel of my bike to the Raspberry Pi, and I connected the Raspberry Pi to a projector. So the projector would show information in the beam of the headlight. In this case, it's showing the speed of the bike. But it could show your next turn. It could show you the distance you've gone, the, the, the amount of calories you burned. Now, I, I'm not such a bad cyclist uh, as it looks in this video. I had the camera kind of right where my torso would normally be, and I'm trying to stretch over it. But this is kind of what it looks like from the point of view of the cyclist. As I said, that's just showing the speed in miles per hour. This could show anything. So while you're here at Maker Faire, if you want to check out more Raspberry Pi projects, I'd recommend going uh, into NiSci and checking out. Uh, there's a 3D printer running. This is made by Tom Calloway. It's got a built-in Raspberry Pi. Um, also down in Zone A in, inside NiSci, there is a, um, uh, a hackerspace named NYC Resistor that made an incredible interactive game using Raspberry Pis, and you can check that out as well. Also right behind you, there's a musical Raspberry Pi uh, installation going on over there. So I, I've kind of run out of time, so I'm happy to take any questions about Raspberry Pi, but I'm going to move aside and let the next presenter get set up. Information about getting started with Raspberry Pi is right there. Thank you, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. <laughs>